church. I want to go ahead and stand for a little bit. Go ahead and stand. We're going to give you like a prayer. Uh, thank you for joining us today. You could have been to another church. You could have gone somewhere else. You could have, could have gone to the beach. You could have gone somewhere else. But you came today to be touched by God. Amen? Amen. So let's go ahead and join for prayer. Father God, we bow our heads in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you that you died and rose again. You defeated death, Lord. And I thank you, Lord, that your word says that in this world, you're going to have sufferings. You're going to go through hard times. But Lord, you said, take heart. Be of good courage, my children, because I have overcome the world. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. Good morning, everyone. As you can see, I'm all alone today. <laughs> so, um, since that being said, I hope that you all will please help me out. Everyone got to sing. Come on, folks. Help her out. Raise your voices for the Lord. Um, It'll help me not feel so alone up here. <laughs> it's a big stage, and I'm a small girl, so. All right, we're going to start out with a song called House of the Lord. This is one of my favorites. I hope that you all will get clapping and just enjoy it and praise God.
because I've said so many times up here on stage, we get so caught up in our daily lives and our jobs and our careers, and sometimes we forget where our identity really is. And I find my identity in just being a child of God. I am who he says he is. Oh, 
I was uh, running, I was running all over the place looking for the keys to the chapel. And praise the Lord, they appeared. And uh, thank God, that's my little mini testimony. Because I found the church keys, or I would have had to call the other church to do it again and to make another set of keys. So don't want to lose those. Father, in the name of Jesus, bless our time. Holy Spirit, come. Uh, thank you, God, for this amazing yeah. uh, location. And thank you for the reminders that you give us every day. And I just pray, God, in the name of Jesus Christ, that you would bless our time together. Amen. So if you have a testimony, I'm going to invite you to come up. Uh, I will share one testimony. As you, somebody, you know, you feel you want to come up and share what the Lord may have done just recently. There's a mic right here. But I will share something that happened uh, this past week. If you're on the church app, if you're on the church app, you know that I had an urgent prayer request. How many see my urgent prayer request? It was urgent. I, I was asking those of you that pray uh, to pray about something that was going on in my family's life. And uh, I got to connect with an individual uh, recently. And um, he's kind of just going through a lot in his personal life. And after uh, talking and listening, a lot of what ministry is just listening to people. Let me just tell you, a lot of what ministry is is just sitting there and just listening to people. Boy, you just sit there and listen, they're gonna love you to pieces. And uh, so at the end, I know that I didn't have an answer for, the, for this young man. But I did, uh, I did invite him to say a prayer with me. So I asked him, this was on the phone by the way, it was all on the phone. And I said, why don't you go ahead and put your hand on your heart and uh, you need the peace of God and, you, and Christ wants to give you peace. So why don't you go ahead and pray um, and uh, pray that the Lord will give you his peace so you can live in his peace uh, rather than all those frequencies that are going on in your mind and your brain and um, wanting you to maybe do something that would not be God honoring. So he actually did it. And then later I would find out that he actually grew up in church, uh, grew up in a small church. And so it was a, it was a praise God report because uh, he was very desperate. I'm not the answer, but as I love to tell people, I can point you to the answer. And his name is Jesus Christ, and he is alive forevermore, and he promises to be there with you if you call upon his name. So, uh, thank you, Lord, for that. Any testimonies? I got it. All right. Come on up here, though, brother. You got to come up front. Uh, we don't have the mic on so. All right. That's okay. I'll speak. Oh, here we go. Oh, my goodness. Watch yourself. Wow. Okay. So uh, this last uh, week, my son and I were out with one of our buddies, and we were installing a project, a sign project, and a sign maker, as most of you probably know, out in Carmel Valley, way out in Carmel Valley. Now, we had a lift truck that we uh, thought we were going to need. We really didn't. And then we had our, our big church, uh, our sign van. And uh, not, I was going to say church van, but it's a sign van. And uh, so my son goes, well, i got to take off for this other uh, appointment here, and so you guys are okay, yeah, me and my buddy, we're okay, we're finishing things up, and, and about five minutes later, I went, wait a minute, let me call him. I said, son, do you by any chance happen to have the keys to the van? He goes, no, oh no, I'm going to be late for this and that and the other, and so he's driving all the way out to the end of, of Carmel Valley. And I said, well, there's a service station right there at the front. Don't worry about it. I'll figure If you can drop it off there, I'll figure out a way. Yeah, just call an Uber, Dad. So I called an Uber and uh, didn't get the first one. The second one I did. Yeah, yeah. Find it the mic. Second one I, uh, he did. And uh, he, uh, he came. His name was Samir. He was from Pakistan uh, originally. Uh, he, was, uh, he was speaking, uh, uh, teaching Arabic in the DLI. And, uh, you know, we just started talking just about life and about whatever and, and uh, started talking about politics and a few things here and all of our concerns for the country. And, you know, we got pretty much or halfway there. He goes, man, you know, it's really neat to hear somebody that actually feels like they know what's going on, you know. And uh, he said, oh, thank you. This and the other. And so we get there. And I get the keys, and I'm heading back, and I'm thinking, you know, I'll tell you what. And I started just sharing my testimony. And I just shared the gospel, exactly how it happened to me, how Jesus came into my heart. And 
When we finally got to our destination, and he's going, wow, that's really cool. You know, it's, he says, I very seldom hear something that really, really touches my heart. And it has been an honor to be here in this car with you. You know, and, and I'm thinking, well, no, the honor's mine. And, you know, that you were here, everything worked out the way it did. And so his name is Samir. We didn't say a sinner's prayer because he was off to his next Uber pickup. But I'll tell you what, that's all it takes. You know, all you got to say is, I was blind, but now I see. You don't have to have an incredible testimony with this, that, this, that, and that, and all this. You don't have to have that. All you, all you got to say is, man, I was lost, but now I'm found. So anyway, I want to encourage you with all that more. Good work. Mike is open. If anyone else has a testimony, come on up here. Um, yeah, and if you do have a great testimony and it's unusual, those are helpful too. So whether they're extraordinary, uh, we got Bar Barb has a testimony. So uh, come on up, Barbara. Deuteronomy 30. I'm not going to read the entire thing, 
But I want to tell you what the man of God, Moses, told to the Israelites. He goes, now you choose this day what you're going to do. Because I have set before you life and death. And then he would go on to say that the answer, I love this verse that is there. Listen to what he says right here. Deuteronomy chapter 30. Uh, it goes like this. I'm just going to read it. The Lord will make you successful in everything that you do. The Lord will delight in all that you put your hands to. Okay, Deuteronomy 30, I'm giving you this day what I'm putting before you today is not very difficult for you to understand. It is not beyond your reach. Now listen to this. It is not kept in the heavens so distant that you must ask, where do I go? Do I go to the heavens to bring it down to where I'm at so I must obey? It is not kept beyond the sea so far away that you must ask, who will cross to the sea to bring us and hear this message that I must obey? No, the message is very close at hand. Look at your hand. This is how close the answer is. Look at your hand. It is on your lips and in your heart so that you can obey. The answer lies not too far. It is like right there in front of us that the Lord gives us the answer. In fact, a lot has to do with what you confess out of your mouth. Because earlier it goes like uh, in the book of Proverbs says that power, uh, life and death are in the power of your tongue. You can bring, you can actually bring a curse to your life by what comes out of your mouth. Amen. Or you can bring life to you and to others by what proceeds out of your mouth. Jesus said that out of the abundance of the heart does a man Amen. speak. So check it out that you have the answer. Of course his name is Christ, his name is Jesus, he's the answer, but Paul says that when you have his spirit inside of you, you have, grab this please, if you have F, you may not have the spirit, but you can have the spirit, you can have as much as you want of the spirit, but when you have the spirit and you confess Jesus as Lord, you confess Jesus, you speak of Jesus, there's something that happens within you that begins to change Amen. the atmosphere within you. Amen. When you share about Jesus with others, there's something that happens with you. The book of Proverbs says that um, those who water others will himself be watered. The, the reason you're going to hear from Eli and probably from a lot of other individuals, uh, young and old, this coming summer, because they have a lot to share. And the more they, they share, the more God will bring back into their lives. So the principle is this, uh, what you put out is what comes back in. So the choice is clear here. You can choose life or you can choose death. And the more you choose the righteous path, the more you choose life, the more life comes to you. The more you choose the other path, well, that's the, that's the path that is not all that great to go on. And uh, the, again, I can share some testimonies that happened this week, but I want to get to my first, because I know Eli's chomping at the bit, and it's just really a devotional on one little verse. And it's in John 10.10. 10. One verse, and I'm just going to blow it up, and I hope it blows up your heart. And this is from the words of Jesus. Guaranteed blessings, right? I think this summer, I'm just going to coin all summer is guaranteed blessings when you do it the Lord's way. And when you, do it, and when you don't do it the Lord's way, guarantee, guarantee that it's not going to go right. Okay, so there's like two coins here. You do it the Lord's way, guarantee blessings. You do it the other way, guarantee your plan will not succeed. Guarantee. Guarantee promise. By the way, I just want to say a shout out. I don't, you know, sometimes getting to dress nice, and I don't often get to do that, but I'm looking at this little suit. You might be pretty impressed with it, but somebody gave it to me yesterday at our rummage sale. At our rummage nice. sale yesterday. It looks nice. It, it was awesome. simple barter. I, I bartered with something that I had on my table and uh, the guy here actually goes to the other church and goes, Vince, I have this suit that I don't think my brother will fit into anymore and I think you might fit it. 
So he gave it to me, and I was like, wow, this, this has to be one of those mini Atkins suits. This is like a $200 guy for free. So praise the Lord, that was just one of those off-the-wall things that happened. And so hey, God, God is good like that. If you, can't, if you can't notice God in the little things, you probably won't notice when he does big things. So receive everything that he wants to bring your way, including nice attire. All right. All right. Uh, John 10.10. Uh, this is the Amplified, well, this is the New Living Translation. This is what Jesus said in regards to what he is offering you today. Remember, this is today. We are in today moment, and our God is in today. Jesus does not change. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So if you can believe this word from Christ, as though he is right here with us, and he wants to share this thought with you. The thief. Who is the thief, folks? Who? Satan. Satan. My friend, if you're going to serve Jesus, you are you have an adverse, you have an adversary. His name is Satanas. His name is the devil, and he he wants to torpedo your faith so you don't get to share anything about what your God is doing in your life. That, that's why the enemy wants to just shut you down. Oh, this Jesus stuff. I remember when I first got saved, one of my uncles says, "Oh, you're just going through a phase right now." He said that you're just going through something. I saw, thankfully, when I see him at a family reunion this coming weekend, I said, it wasn't a phase, brother. <laughs> it was God. God did something. He delivered me. But the enemy, the thief, the devil, Satan comes. He comes only in order to steal, kill, and destroy. Yes, he's a destroyer. Uh, we see that today all around us, folks. People's lives are being destroyed. People's lives are, their livelihood is just coming to shambles. But I, praise God, but I came that they may have and enjoy life and have it to its totality, to full, till it overflows. I'm going to read out the NLT. I think that's the Amplified. That's a good version, but I'm just going to read out the NLT because I brought two Bibles to church. So I'm going to just share from the other version. John 10.10, 10, the NLT goes like this. The thief's purpose is to steal, kill, and destroy. But my purpose, Christ says of himself, is to give them a rich and satisfying life. That is, that is the Lord's purpose in your life. That is the Lord's purpose in your family's life. That is the Lord's purpose in your community of your church family is to bring life into that congregation, life into your life, life into your marriage, life into your community. The Lord has come to use you. He's come to use you. He could have used an angels, but he's come to use you as his vessel to bring life and to bring life at its very best. Now, in order for me to share this passage of scripture, and I've said this before, like, it's awesome to share something that I've experienced in my life. It's no fun to come up here and share something that I have not experienced because it's like, I haven't seen that in my life. But isn't it awesome that I can come, or anyone that preaches on something is like, I've seen it, I've read it, i am experienced that in my life today, in 2024, uh, I'm experienced full to life, the good life. Because why? Not because you tell me I can do that. Not because Pastor Matt tells me that I can enter that place. But because Jesus Christ, Emmanuel, the Lord with us, has put that before me. And so now I step into that. So now the question is this. Here's the hard part. How do we get there? How do we come into this place well, your life, your life is like a fragrance of the aroma of Christ inside of you. That His Spirit is upon you, that spirit of gentleness, the spirit of kindness, oh, the spirit of love, the spirit of patience, long-suffering. I can go on and on and on, but I'm not going to do that. But when that is upon your life, life becomes very awesome. But how do we get there? See, that, that's the key. It's like, okay, I, I can, you know, a young man. Don't need my notes no more. 
Well, yes, you better get ready. I don't, a, a, a young man came up to me, a young man, I, and I hope that I get this from a lot of young individuals, okay, because that's kind of where I want to leave my legacy, along with my family, my daughter, and my wife, and whoever else wants me to just put something, imprint my fate upon them, because when I die, that's all that's going to get left behind. That my wife is not going to end up with a boatload of money, she's not going to get a house, she's just going to end up with a little meager life insurance littered, and a lot of faith of what I had what I expressed in my life. But he goes, Vince, I know there's something more. And maybe some of you, maybe some of you, like you're in the mid part of June, it's like, this Jesus stuff, God, I know there's something more. Folks, there is something more. God, God wants to take you from that unfulfilled, meager existence Forget about the world. I mean, unfortunately, there's people in church today on Sunday that live very meager existence as old. Where's God? I mean, like, someone look at their life and it's like, what, what's God doing in that life? But see, God wants to use your life and show. So here's how. Here's just three things. And Eli, come on up. Here's three things to get you going into like rocket ship Christianity. Rocket ship Christianity, where you just go and you're just like, you're in orbit for Jesus and you're touching life. You're touching life. By the way, when you are uh, being used by the Lord, other people are going to get blessed because of you. It's not just for me to go be a hermit in a cave somewhere in a royal safe and live in a, uh, in a small little monastery or being about 10 other guys. No, it's just for everyone gets blessed and encouraged because the Lord is doing that in my life. So, number one, all right? Number one, now, here's my notes. And if you got to see these notes, pretty much all week was, Lord Jesus, what do you want me to do? God, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do, Lord? And then I just gotta stop and relax and just listen. So number one is, now that the Lord is in your life, what is it the Lord wants you to do? All right, we had a men's encounter. Some of the men came, they came. I think some were literally touched. And we had actually, praise the Lord, one of the young guys said, I'll even leave worship. And I asked him, of course, can you leave praise and worship for the next men's encounter? And without hesitation, there wasn't much hesitation. He goes, count me in. See, maybe, that, maybe that's what the Lord wants him to do. And I'm thankful that he is doing that. So the Lord wants to give you instructions, specific directions, so then you can go into the different degree in your life. So... In order to enter that place, you need to go to headquarters for direction, right? Go to headquarters, but that's number one. Number two, this is a big one here. In our lives, sometimes we have like an atmosphere around us that is just not, we're just not like spiritually feeling all that there. I, I mean, you kind of never get that where it's like, I just don't feel God, I just like... It's God stuff. It's like, you know, like we come to church, it's awesome, but in our lives, sometimes it's just a lot of stuff. Well, praise and worship the Lord. Amen. Praise and worship the Lord. Uh, I love our worship team, but you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I don't got to wait. I just start singing alabancias, praises and worship to the Lord. Uh, there's a scripture that says that he'll put a melody, he'll put a hymn, excuse me, but put a hymn in your heart because that is the Lord's presence. And so one of the ways that's going to help you is that by faith, sing a, sing a joyful noise to the Lord. Make melodies to God. Sing praises to the Lord because when you do that, there's something that happens around you. Like, I can't explain it, but it's like now you got like this total freedom around you and you're speaking life, right? You're speaking life, you're speaking worship, you're praising Jesus. I mean, when you're praising Jesus, uh, something's going to happen that's really good. So get in that place this summer, worshiping Jesus. I don't care if it's Caleb. I don't care if it's a Calvary Connection. Uh, I don't know. Grab a hymn book. I'm sure the other church would be fine. You grab a hymn book and look through them and look at some of those wonderful hymns. But make a joyful noise. Okay, number three. Number three. This is a big one here, okay? This is going to be a challenge. But here's the number third thing to make your life start running. Like just zooming. Is listen, listen 
to the Spirit. Amen. Listen to the Spirit. Because the Spirit wants to instruct you. He wants to teach you. He's in the place of Jesus. So Jesus is not here with us, but the Spirit is here. And so He wants to prod you to action. Amen. So what you're going to have to do is, you're going to have to spend time with Him, the Lord and the Spirit. What was it? The other day there was a testimony a lot. One of the young guys was praying for the Holy Spirit. Yeah, he's not here today, but I think it was Adrian. What was it? Uh, the guy was praying for the Holy Spirit to do something because he was just in the tank. And lo and behold, he ran into Adrian who brought him to church. Next thing you know, he's getting baptized. I mean, you talk about a powerful prayer that was answered. He was asking the Holy Spirit, what do I do? And then lo and behold, Adrian comes Tells him a little bit about the Lord, brings him to church, and I think two weeks later he's baptized. Yes, uh, this last week he's just out of his mouth, and you can see like something's going on. But praise the Lord, he, he acknowledged the Holy Spirit. So I want to give you this acknowledge the Holy Spirit because he won't lead you wrong. And the verse to go with that, so you know that that's the Bible verse, and this is not Vince giving you a verse out of his own commentaries. The book of Paul, Paul says, as many as are led by the Spirit, mm -hmm. they are the sons and the daughters of God. Amen. So that means God wants to move you along this summer, and then you're going to have to follow that path. Amen? Amen. All right. Well, let's give your undivided attention to Eli. There you go. That was, uh, I hope I still, still have your guys' attention. That was a very long message. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. But thank you, brother, for the great encouragement. Yes, choose life. Don't choose death, because when you sin, that's what you do when you're choosing death. Um, but the title of my message, and I'll try not to be too long with it, um, we've been here for a while already, uh, but the title of my message today is simply Go Through the Fire. So I'm going to take a different, Vince was on choosing life, you know, choose life or choose death, I'm going to go on a whole different page, okay? So the title of my message is Go Through the Fire. And I'm going to start off reading here, I think Brother Ramon has the verse up there, John chapter 16, verse 33 reads, and this is Jesus speaking. He said, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. I promise that you will have suffering in this world. But be courageous. I have conquered the world. So this is one of the most, amen. This is one of the most powerful scriptures that, in my opinion, that Jesus gave right before his betrayal. And there's some context. I'm going to give you guys some context behind this. This is Jesus speaking to his disciples and in, in, this, uh, in this certain scenario. And now we know that, um, um, well, I'm going to ask you this, but who's also his disciples here today? Us. Amen. We're his disciples. So he's also speaking to us. So he's speaking to the disciples then, now he's speaking to us as well with this verse. Um, but he was telling his disciples here that hard times are going to come. Okay. Obviously, they didn't know that, oh, man, this, you're about to get betrayed. They didn't know all that. Only Jesus did. He literally, he literally was about to be betrayed, and he's letting them know that they're going to have you're going to be persecuted. You're going to go through hard times. You're going to go through a lot of sorrows. But take heart because he has overcome the world. So this verse is literally Jesus' promise that, that we all here today are going to have trials and tribulation. Amen? And, and I know it's hard to even say amen to that. But let's just make this clear that he never promised an easy life. You'll never find that in the Bible where it says you're going to have an easy life. You're never going to have arguments. You're never going to have sometimes a tough marriage, tough relationships, or never fighting with your parents because this world is full of sin and we have sin, right? We're both with the flesh. So it's inevitable that we're going to have hard times, amen? So we need to acknowledge that already that and just accept that just because you became a Christian doesn't mean life is going to be all purity now. It's going to be a fairy tale. The Bible doesn't say that. It says you'll be blessed for obeying God. But before I go any further, let's all turn to James chapter 1 here really quick. James chapter 1, and I'll start at verse 1 here. It's up there. Amen. Praise the Lord. So if you don't bring your Bible, it's up there. It's James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, and the twelve tribes dispersed of God. Greetings. Consider it a great joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you experience various trials, because you know that the testing of your faith produces endurance. And let endurance have its full effect, so that you may be mature and complete and lacking nothing. I love verse 2. Consider it great joy. Consider it great joy 
It's not saying consider it great joy, and I, I spoke about this, that, oh, your dog died, oh, be happy that your dog died, or be happy this is happening in your life. No, but be happy of the spiritual growth that it's been accomplished in your life. Amen? So, whatever it is that you're going through, I obviously don't know what each and every one of you are going through. I know what I'm going through, and maybe my, my immediate circle, but just go through that trial, because maybe it's meant to help you to, to make you learn to trust God more. Maybe it's been to make you more patient. You know, maybe you're always fighting with your boss or whatever it is. But whatever it is that you're going through, what's bothering you in life, just go through it. Don't give up. And again, we have to stop believing just because we're Christians that this life is going to be perfect and easy. And again, going back to John chapter 16, he promised that. that he promised we will have tribulation. That's the way I see that verse. When he says that, hey, you're going to have tribulation. That's basically him saying, I promise you that you're going to go through hard things. Um, and let's take a look at some examples here. I printed this out over the internet here. And let's look at some examples of, of, of some great figures we see in the Bible. Uh, some that we also look up to. I think of the Psalmist David, Apostle Peter, Apostle Paul. These men in the Bible, um, and women as well, they went through trials. They didn't give up. And whether they went through these trials based upon their own sin or based upon God's will for life, they didn't give up. They just they went through the trial. And this is some examples here. And this is what it, this is what it can look like for your life if you don't give up and you continue to go through the trial. Job. Job is perhaps the most well-known figure for enduring severe trials. He lost his wealth, health, and family, but remained steadfast in his faith. In the end, God restored his fortunes and blessed him even more abundantly than before. God learned, uh, Job learned to trust God even when he didn't understand his ways. And now Job doesn't even need to understand God's ways to trust him. So we see Job here. He, he was a, he, now he's able to trust God in any circumstance now. Amen? Um, um, let's go another one here. Apostle Peter experienced significant trials, including denying Jesus three times. However, he repented and was restored by Jesus. And Peter went on to become a leading figure in the early church, boldly preaching, boldly preaching the gospel despite being persecuted. And Peter learned through his own personal journey that redemption is possible and for all those who come to the Lord Jesus Christ. I got a whole long list here. I got Joseph. Uh, I got I got Psalmist David. Uh, all the other great ones. But my question is, is like, do we get it now? Right? When we don't give up, it's, it's very easy to give up. Yeah. Right? To say I'm throwing the towel. I'm not again. I'm gonna try all that. Another another argument. Another another. I'm fighting with this person now too. But see, we come to church on Sunday, and that's why I'm gonna invite you guys to the altar later on. To come give that to God and say, Lord, I'm weak. Lord, I, I need your strength. I, Eli's crazy, man. He's talking about considering a great joy, doing all these things that to go through. But Lord, I just feel like I can't go through it. But I'm here to encourage you that you can go through it. Amen? You can Amen. go through it. Because you have a family here with us. And, and if you can't pick yourself up, then we will pick you up. Amen? And uh, I'm going to go back here. Um, to, to John chapter 16, verse 33, back to the first verse. I have told you these things so that in me you have peace. So what I just said right now, just picture Jesus telling you that right now. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. You would have suffering, suffering in this world, but be courageous. I have conquered the world. I, I love that verse so much um, um, because Jesus has overcome it all already. Sometimes we forget that, that this is all temporary. That trial you go through, that battle you're enduring, it's not going to be forever. It's not going to be forever, amen? Because heaven awaits us. So now I'm going to go here, and I know I'm going back and forth with a lot of verses, but I really want to give you guys the word of God today, because I think that's the most powerful thing uh, that you can ever give someone and leave them with on a Sunday, is the word of God. Um, it's Ecclesiastes chapter 4, uh, chapter 4, verse 9. My brother got out. Thank you, Brother Ramon. Can you ever get a thank you, Brother Ramon? Thank you, Amy and Barbara. All of you take this and that thing back to you. Amen. Praise God. And everyone else that helps with the tech, man, because I don't know how to do it. So, yeah, if you might help Pastor Ben, don't, don't ask me because I don't know how to do it. Don't look at me. <laughs> amen. 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 Man, I love this church. I love that we can all laugh and uh, love each other, man. I love it. Okay, verse 9. Uh, I got to put my serious book back on. Okay. 
Verse 9. Uh, two are better than one because they have a good reward for their efforts. For if either falls, his companion can lift them up, his friend can lift them up, his brother in Christ, sister in Christ can lift them up. But maybe the one who falls without another lift them up. Also, if two lie down together, they can keep warm. But how can one person alone keep warm? And if someone overpowers one person, two can resist them. And a cord of three strands is not easily broken. So this goes into my next point, as I'm encouraging you guys to go through the trial. Um, nowhere in the Bible it says that you have to go to the trial alone. Nowhere it says that. It says actually it will be better for you to come to church, get a friend in Christ, get a mentor in Christ to help you through that trial. Amen. See, the thing is, when we get through a trial, and I've been a victim of this before, is that we think that nobody understands. We think that we're the only person that goes through hard times, the only person that got stuck in traffic, the only person with the car shut down. That's a lie of the enemy to keep you, to keep you alone and in those chains, so that you never go through church, you never go out, right? That, that's, that's a lie of the enemy to keep you there. But I'm here to, to encourage you that... As we as a church here, it's in our name. Freedom, friendship, fellowship, right? Right? There's a reason why friendship's in that word. It's because we're all here to be friends to one another, to be brothers and love one another. Amen? We don't, we don't gotta go through the trial alone. We don't gotta go through whatever you're going through. And again, I, don't, I may not know what it is, but God understands it. Maybe He knows what you're going through. Amen? I'm gonna read here John chapter 15, verses 12 to 13 says, My command is this, and this is Jesus speaking. Love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no, no, no one than this, to lay down one, one's life for his friend. Amen? I mean, Jesus said it. Every time he says something, you just want to pay attention so much. I mean, it's so beautiful how this whole book, that we can pick it up at any time. When we need a word from God, we need, it, we need some direction or instruction. It's right here. Amen? Because the, the preachers that come up here and preach, this is where we get it from. Amen? So this isn't rocket science or this isn't like some hidden word, you know. It's not hidden anymore. No, it's right here in the word of God. If you don't have a Bible, I will personally buy you. Amen? But the reason why I say these verses, and I know, um, you know, in Galatians chapter 4, a lot of people use that verse uh, for marriage. Two is better than one, you know, you your wife and God. But today I wanted to use it for us here today to encourage one another to band together as believers. Uh, uh, band together at the potluck, you know. Uh, I see all the laughing faces. Uh, those are one of the best times that I have there, honestly. And um, just, just understanding that we can go through the trials, we can go through the fire, but we don't have to do it alone. Amen. We don't have to do it alone. So my main points today is I want to give you guys a... Uh, uh, it's three main points. Uh, three, like you had three main points, Pastor Vince. So three and three, amen, praise God. We're on point, we're on point. Um, number one is this, is that accept Jesus' promise that you will go through trials and suffering. The, the faster that you can accept that you're going to go through hard things, you're going to go through things that you don't understand, the better you're going to be off. Okay? You just have to accept that, that yes, I am going to go through things. My life's not always going to be easy. That's okay, and that's okay, amen. In fact, imagine if your life was so perfect and easy, what spiritual growth would you, would you even be able to, to, to get? Amen? Right. You would get zero. So, number two is this. And just because you're a Christian doesn't mean you won't endure hard things. And in fact, being a Christian actually invites more suffering, more persecution. Amen? Because when I became a Christian, oh man, it got crazy. It got really, really crazy. Man, I was like, man, this, my neighbor hates me now. These people are telling me stuff. So being a Christian, yes, we have to accept the fact we're going to go through things. Not everybody's going to love us. But see, that's my encouragement today is that that's why we got each other. That's why we come here uh, to church. We come up here because we got a family here. Amen? So and most of all, and most of all is this, is let's do this together, family. Let's pray for one another. Not just pray for another here at the altar. Let's pray for another throughout the week. Let's check up on one another. Let's text one another. Uh, I think a brother Leonard uh, asked him for, uh, uh, for for some legal reason, and he goes, hey, Eli, I hope your day's going good, man. And I looked at that, I'm like, thank you, brother. I needed that. Thank you, brother. So that was an encouragement. Uh, Leonard, thank you, brother, for that. Let's check up one another and, and let love one another. And most of all, let's go through the trial. 
Amen. Let's go through it. Amen. So I just want to stand right now. I know you guys stood a lot. I don't want you guys to fall asleep on me. Stand, please. And, and so, someone was wiping their eyes back there. I see they're falling asleep back there. Someone's throwing a pillow. But uh, amen. Praise God. Um, but I just want to invite everyone to a better time today. I just want to invite you to the altar. Maybe that's you. You're going through a tough time. Uh, maybe recently something just happened and you don't understand why it happened. Um, but here at this church, we're here to pray for you. So this altar is open if you need any prayer. And just as it was open last week for healing, because we believe in the miracles of God. Amen. We believe in the miracles of God. Um, I think of Sister Penny. I know she wouldn't mind me saying this. She used to have cancer. Amen. But we prayed for her. I remember it was a whole big group of prayer that prayed and prayed in the back of the church. A whole big, just everyone came and prayed and, and laid her hands on Penny. And Sister Penny, did you grow from that trial? Amen. Amen. And now you're healed, right? Amen. 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 Praise God. I bring up that story of Sister Penny because that, that was a miracle, and uh, I just thank God because in a sense, you know, we're all miracles. Amen? Amen. And we're all, we're all going through something, and I'm here to tell you that even if sometimes, um, you know, your brother or sister in Christ doesn't understand, just remember that the man of love, he understands. Amen. Amen? Amen. So the altar's open. Anyone that's wanting prayer, come on up, please.